Hi there, I am Anmol and I welcome you back to my YouTube channel. And today's topic of discussion would be a different product altogether, which is UiPath Automation Hub. So let's have a quick run through around what is Automation Hub and why do we need to use it? Before that, we would have seen, of course, this particular phase slide of all the UiPath products, which has all the phases and the products that are therein starting from the discover phase, build, manage, run, engage, and measure. So the automation hub or the topic that we would be discussing falls in the discover phase along with process mining, task capture, and task mining. Now, initially what was there, that automation hub was built around enabling the customers to discover new opportunities to automate. So it was like kind of a dashboard, or you can say a kind of a place that was given to the customers or to the end users, wherein they can just throw their ideas. And from that, they can discover all the opportunities that they can automate. But later on, with all the new advancements that have been put in, the focus is much more than that. First one, now the automation hub focuses on idea of collaboration, with the business users to scale the automation program. With the COE members can easily now manage the automation using Automation Hub. Now, because it has different capabilities, it also allows the COE members or the team members to easily manage the automations that they are developing till the time it reaches the production. And it also focuses in enabling so that we can estimate the ROI, which is return on investment and the potential of the automation. So all the automation that we actually do, at the end, we have to look at the larger aspect and we do it because we want a good ROI at some point down the line. So Automation Hub also let us calculate the ROI so that we can see a bigger picture of how much impact that does this particular automation brings us. Now over here, you can see it's written, Automation Hub is a collaborative process identification, automation pipeline management, and process repository tool. Its goal is to accelerate the adoption of RPA across your organization by building an RPA community of interest. Now, when we talk about this particular product, which falls under the discover phase, usually the question that comes to our mind is that, is it of any use to us or how we can even leverage this particular product? What if we buy this product and it's of no use to us and the license cost just goes by waste license cost? Believe me, by the end of this video, maybe you'll have a better understanding about the product and I would be able to, you know, resolve some of the queries that you get when you hear about this particular tool. Okay. So as a business user, you can, of course, explore automation ideas submitted by others and you can even get inspired to contribute as well. So it usually happens that when we see something relatable, it clicks us that, okay, if we kind of make little differences or kind of make little changes in this process, this process might also fit in my department as well. Or if, if we replace this particular application with this particular application, it's exactly the same process that I've been doing in my department. So when you see all those ideas being thrown up on the automation hub, it actually also lets you explore more automation ideas that are within your organization, but you're just not able to think it through or you're not able to put it all together. So these are the three main pillars of the automation hub that you see over my screen. First being enterprise community workspace. Second being automation opportunities management pipeline and the third being automation store. Now let's talk about the first one, which is enterprise community workspace. So it connects to submit automation idea and share. Now we're not talking about automation hub for our respective departments, rather we are taking into consideration an entire organization, which may have multiple departments. Now there could be similar 
line or you can say similar sort of work that's being done in the IT department and that's being done in finance department, say for example, or that's being done in finance department or that's being done in accounting department for that matter. And we can leverage Automation Hub to submit the automation ideas and share across within different departments. So that if we look at the larger aspect, the organization has automated most of its mundane task. And collaboration between SMEs, developer, and the COE to accelerate the automation project's development. So collaboration, of course, plays a very important role. And usually when we work as a team, we collaborate within the team members. And sometimes we even do not collaborate properly within the team as well. And that leads to kind of later in the maintenance phase, we have to put in more effort when we do not collaborate as team. So automation hub lets you collaborate between SMEs, lets you collaborate between developers as well as COE to accelerate the automation projects. Now comes Automation Opportunities Management Pipeline. It also lets you manage your entire pipeline. So suppose you've thought of 10 process that you want to automate by end of this year. Now you'll also have to take into consideration the priorities, like which automation holds the most priority and which automation holds the least as well as different other factors like the cost, which is going to save us more time or which is going to yield us more cost, okay? Or the error rates for a particular process, it could be that the, we cannot afford any error rate, so we have to automate it and avoid human intervention in it, okay? So accordingly, we'll have to kind of prioritize and first of all, finish those automations and then move on to the remaining nine or remaining eight. So that is what we look at, look at all the automation opportunities and we kind of manage them accordingly. Now, when we have all those automation opportunities at a single location, so we'll not be targeting department wise, rather we, will, we would be looking at a wider aspect at organization level. That at organization level, if I have two, automation ideas from IT, two automation ideas from finance, and one automation idea from HR, and I see that it's year closing or it's financial year closing, and I want to give preference to say finance or a HR use case rather than the IT one. So accordingly, I'm going to manage it all. And accordingly, the developers would pick it up, pick up those process to develop them. So that as sooner as they go into production, I can start leveraging the benefit that automation provides me at the earliest. Okay, so what happens is that in Automation Hub, we have an option of creating and submitting an idea, which we would see on later in the video. So what we have to do is we have to provide some general info, and then the Automation Hub will calculate the score, indicating how suitable that particular automation is. Now, based on this info, a COE can evaluate and ask the process owner to provide more info so that accordingly they can go and prioritize. Okay, now the business user can impact the decision and prioritization by building a solid case in the detailed assessment. So we'll see how does this all happen? How can the COE take part? How can you submit an idea and then how can a business user come and provide input so that the prioritization changes. Now, when the business user provides certain input in the detailed assessment, that particular info is used to calculate different KPIs, which indicate the potential benefit of an automation and the benefit it can provide to the end users as well. Now, last but not the least, we have Automation Store. So it's like a centralized place where you can create. When I say create, which means you can upload, store, and you can also search reusable component across your organization through the organization's private repository. So it's more like a private marketplace for you. 
if you do not want to use third party applications that are provided over marketplace rather you only want to use reusable components that have been developed and designed in house then you can make use of automation store now moving on we'll see how do we actually put all this into the practical implementation i'll give you a quick walkthrough of what automation hub actually looks like and in the next video we'll deep dive more into automation hub and on submitting ideas and all of that now first and foremost for you to actually access it you need to have an enterprise trial license with just community edition you cannot use automation hub now if you do not have an enterprise license you can actually enroll for a free enterprise trial so you can go on to licenses and you have enterprise activation here. If you have license number, you can go for enterprise activation or otherwise you'll have an option here which says if you want to go with the trial. So you'll just have to go with the trial and provide your business email address. And once you do that, it will just reload and provide you the pro trial version. As you can see, I have my pro trial version with me. Once you have this, when you go to robots and services, you will see automation hub. So there is one license required for you to enable automation hub on a given tenant. And there are no limitation for the number of users, ideas or reusable components that can be managed within one automation hub license. So that's an USP, that's an advantage that with just one license, you can actually collaborate with n number of users all across your organization you can have thousands and hundreds of ideas being thrown up at one place and n number of reusable components being stored and thrown up at one place that is available to consume all across your organization so you can just imagine the amount of ease one automation hub license can bring to your organization. Moving on, once you have activated, over here you can see on the left hand side, I can see an automation hub icon. Now, even if you have enabled the enterprise trial license, you may still not see it. So for that, you'll have to do this thing that you'll have to go to admin, you'll have to go to tenant, you can select the tenant on which you want to enable automation hub and you can go to tenant settings. Once you go to tenant setting over here, you'll see automation hub. For me, it's enabled, so I do not see it here because I've already provisioned that service. But if you do not see automation hub there, you can enable it. Okay. Once you enable it, you can click on save and then you'll have automation hub. Once you click on it, now, for the first time, when you click on Automation Hub, it will take around five to seven minutes for everything to load, and then you can start using it. So you can just click on it, and you'll get a page that says it is getting things ready. And uh, once it is all ready, the page will get automatically refreshed. So you'll just have to wait. Once it has loaded everything, the page will automatically refresh, and you'll land onto your UiPath Automation Hub. Now. This is the first page that you land on to. And over here, you'll see n number of ideas already present. So this is kind of a template sort of thing that is being provided. And you can see the submitter is Jane Doe for all of these ideas. So this is just to give you a flavor of how things would look like once you actually start using it. So you can, of course, go on removing all of these that you see on screen once you actually go on using it in an enterprise level. But as of now, this actually gives you the flavor. And also, if you look at these cards, you can see the face, you can see the status, you can see who has submitted it, and you can see to which department it belongs. So this is live, which means this one is already introduction, and it belongs to human resource department. Now, this one is belonging to information technology department and the phases idea it's it's just the initial phase and the status as of now is approved now if you select any one of this it will show you more information about this particular process okay so you can see the description is given 
then you can see high level assessment is given. Now, by going through all these high level assessment, now if you remember, I told you that how do we actually manage the pipeline is when the process owner or the SMEs actually provide their input on all these things that whether data is highly formatted, the input data is accessed digitally or it's handwritten, are any of these process documents available or not, how frequent can we expect changes in the process and all of these things. Now, when the SMEs or the process owner answer all these questions, it actually lets you calculate how much time would it take, how much would it be complex, how much benefit could it bring to the organization. And accordingly, it calculates this thing, so suitability and readiness. And you can see what does this mean. So idea score means this is an overall score indicating how good your idea is for automation. Usually, we of course know all these rules that there is, you know, a lot of work involved, a lot of mundane work is involved, and it's rather very formatted data, and you can simply go on automating it without re-engineering it, then it's it's definitely advisable that you go and simply automate such stuff. So this is the idea score that takes into consideration all the assessment that we, ha we have done and then provides us an overall score. Then we have readiness score. So this is an overall score indicating how ready your idea is for automation. Now, if your input data is accessed digitally, then it's readily available. Okay, so it is somewhere soft copy, somewhere available, and you can simply read onto the data and start processing it. Whereas if you have raw data, then that of course needs to be engineered into an information sort, and then later it can be consumed for automation. So that comes under readiness score. Then we have suitability score. So this is an overall score indicating how good of a candidate your idea is for automation. Now, if you see, it says the input data is accessed digitally and it says strongly agree that everything is digitally, okay. And you can see readiness score is the highest, which is 90%, okay. So these all are the KPIs that it takes into consideration while calculating that how much it is ready to be automated, how much would it be suitable once you automate it and all such things. Now, over here, you have documentation as well. If you are interested into this particular thing, you can mark that, okay, I'm interested. So similarly, all those in your organization who are interested in this particular automation and think that this can bring value to the department, they can mark this as interested or they can just follow it. So that the submitter as of now, which is Jane Doe, when Jane Doe makes actually any changes into this particular thing, into this particular idea because as of now you can see this particular idea is in idea phase the phase is idea only it's not like it's deployed or it's it's in development it's just an idea so if Jane Doe makes any changes or the process owner makes any changes into this idea if you're following this you'll get a notification over here you can see this is the bell icon so if you're following any particular idea that's been submitted and any change has been made into it you'll get a notification about it and you can keep track of it then we have documentation you can also make use of task capture to actually perform everything and it will go on taking screenshots and creating flowchart of all the steps that you have performed. Okay. And you can go and download the PDD template, the SDD template, and the development specification document, the DSD template. You can download, fill them, and then upload those files. If you want to document the entire thing using task capture, you can also do that. Then we have components. If you want to add any reusable component that you think that you'll be consuming, you can also add those components. If in your team there are more collaborators, you can also add those people, okay. Then if there's any change request, then you can also create those change requests, okay. Now, all this you saw that if you want to report abuse, which is hardly the case when you're using 
this particular thing within your organization but if you think it's something very absurd or somebody would have created it just by mistake then you can of course report abuse as well now if you want to submit this exact idea with little modification of your own you can go with submit idea as well or you can edit this particular thing as well okay now when you click on this edit idea you will have this particular thing all the things in editable format and you can go and edit all of it okay so this is the high level assessment that we were talking that usually the process owner or the smes so you can fill it according to your understanding but then the process owner and the smes can actually do a high level assessment on their own and if they think that there's anything that needs to be changed or has not been documented properly they'll come and change that okay now you can list the benefits, you can list the challenges. Now challenges you can only list once you have encountered them. But if there's any expected challenge that you've seen, you can of course add that. You can upload a demo sort of video of the process if it's available, but the maximum upload size is 200 MB only. So you'll have to keep that in mind when you're uploading. Now, if you want to see any similar automation that you think that this particular automation also links to your one of the automation. So you can link all this automation here. So if a person is actually coming and visiting this particular idea, it also gets to see all the similar automation as well. And there are chances that to your automation, the person may find more similarity. So you can do that as well. Now, this is the explore thing. Now we have components and leaderboard as well. So if we go to components over here, you can actually upload the components, the reusable components. And if you want to use any of it, you can click on this particular component, which is activity creator, and you can simply download it. You'll see an overview description here, and you can also edit this particular component and you'll be able to edit only all this overview and everything and not everything. And if you want to download and start using it, you can simply download this particular thing and start using it. If you want to also submit your own reusable component, say suppose you have created login to Oracle or login to SAP, and you want to upload that particular component, you can click on upload component, fill in all these particular things. So the form that you fill for uploading a component is kind of similar form that you fill while you want to upload a component onto the marketplace. Majority of the things are similar. There might be some changes. So you can fill all these fields, the required fields and the benefits, dependencies. You can save as draft and two days later you want to update something and then submit. You can do that or you can simply go and submit it. Then we have dashboard wherein you can see automation program performance okay so which automation is performing how you can see it all over here how much automation are in live how much automation are in implementation and how much of them have been qualified which means they have been approved and if you want to see one year estimated benefits this is where you can calculate all of them and see, which is you can see your entire ROI that all the automations that you've planned is going to provide you, which is very important from an organization point of view. Then you have planning report, cost report, and you can actually go on planning everything, increasing, decreasing the KPIs, affecting the KPIs to see how you can actually get maximum benefit or maximum ROI with all the automations that you've planned for this particular year. Then we have admin console. From here, you can actually manage access, give users access as well. You want to assign roles. You want to create an altogether different role. You can do that. So see, these all are the, you can say, account owners. They can do all these things. Okay. Now, if you want to, you know, view or edit few of the things you can do that okay what a component curator can do you can see a component curator can view an idea and submit an employee driven idea what an authorized user can do the user can do all this now if you want to edit this create a new role you can do all of that okay 
what a business reviewer can do, what a technical reviewer can do, what a system admin can do. So you'll have all these roles here. And if you want to assign role to a particular user, you can also do that as well. All you have to do is provide some basic details of the user, like email ID and all, and then assign that particular user with a particular role, like say system admin, RPA curator, or anything as such. And then you can actually add that particular user as well. Now, if you want to add user, you can click on add user. You'll have to provide email ID, first name, last name, all general information. And you can give a role as well. Standard user, system admin, component curator, any role that you think fits that particular user. If you know that particular user belongs to this particular business area, you can assign that area to that particular person as well. And then you can add that particular user to your automation. To your automation hub account. Next up, we have platform setup, wherein we see a lot of things like open API, import pipeline, how you can connect to orchestrator, how you can connect to insights, how you can connect to Jira. So it also provides cross-platform integration with all these three things, orchestrator, insights, and Jira, and you can use that. Then we have manage components. So that actually lets you manage the components or the reusable components that have been uploaded. Okay. So from here also, you can go and upload your components. Now you can submit an idea. You can submit a COE-driven idea submit an automation or submit a CR, which is change request by clicking on this bulb icon on right top. You can also give business user access to this. If, we, if they want to submit a CR, they can submit a CR using this particular platform as well. Then this is, will give you all the tasks. So if there's any task that you have to approve or it's pending at your end, you can click on this tick icon next to submit idea and you can see what are the incomplete tasks that you have. Then over here, you can see all your notifications. Then clicking on these three dots, you can view your profile and email settings. And that's it. Now, we also talked about one of the pillars, which is automation store. So the way you enabled Automation Hub by going on to Tenant Settings, similarly, you can go and enable Automation Store as well. Once you do that over here, you can see Automation Store available. Now, Automation Store also has certain things already available. Okay, if you kind of see, there are 13 automation ideas in the works though, which means all those 13 things that we saw in the Automation Hub Okay, you can see all of them in store as well. So you can see all of these. Okay, now what automation store does, once you actually publish all of them, you can directly run these automation from your assistant. If your UiPath assistant is connected, then you'll see all these published ideas in your assistant as well. And from there, you can directly run them. So suppose you created a process of setting up out of office. So if that particular component is already available in your automation hub, you can see that in your assistant and you can simply go and run that process from your assistant itself without coming here. And that would simply set up your out of office. Now, over here, you, you only see say eight and there it says that there are 13 ideas. It's because it's not showing you all but you also have options on filtering it on basis of information technology that you only want to see IT related stuff and nothing else. So you can see these are the five related to IT. Similarly, you can also sort them based on their face, recently updated, alphabetical or most popular. You have more filter criteria as well based on application, based on submission path, based on business unit based on phase and so on and so forth. Now, if you look closely, it also shows you how much time a particular idea or a particular thing is saving. Okay, 
So you can see UiPath Projects Helper, which is in production as of now, has a potential benefit of saving 133 hours per month. And this benefit is per employee. So if you actually show figure like this to your organization, or to your management, as well as to your end user, it would definitely bring you a great advantage. And that is why this is a great tool when you want to have a wider aspect and you want to you know, go into a fully automated enterprise. So this particular tool, Automation Hub, as well as Automation Store, would help you provide that wider aspect or that wider vision of doing everything at one place and of working collaboratively within an organization to achieve and to throw up more automation ideas and ultimately deploy them and make them live. So that's it for this particular video. I shall see you in the next video wherein we would submit a particular idea and provide high level assessment to see how much would it be suitable for us to go with that automation. Till then, stay tuned and I shall see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.